So there are a million ways to start writing a play. And um, Lloyd will have a chance to talk a little later on, and Lloyd may have a completely different method. I think everybody has a different method. Um, but I'll just share how I do it. Um, I kind of need three things to start writing a play. Um, the first is a question, uh, something that I'm confused about. And this relates back to this notion of finding out that I was actually interested in um, Asian issues and Asian American issues through the work, um, discovering something about myself. So there's, um, I, there's a, a question that is confusing me. And I write the play to figure out how I feel about it deep inside. Um, to use an example, because um, of the history of M. Butterfly in this, in this university, and because it's probably still my best known play, um, in M. Butterfly, for instance, um, I heard this story at a party about a French diplomat. It's a true story about a French diplomat who had a 20 year affair with a Chinese actress who turned out to be A, a spy, and B, a man in drag. And the diplomat claimed that he never knew the true gender of his lover. So I thought, well, oh, that's interesting. Um, and I began to, so, the, so what's the question? Well, the question is, there's an obvious one, which is, how could the diplomat not have known? You know, how can you have a love for 20 years and not know that she's actually a guy? Um, and, but then there's also another thing where another part of me felt intuitively that, you yeah, know, there's something about the story that really makes sense. And I really understand this. And, why the heck is it that I feel like I really understand the story? So that's a question for me, and that becomes a reason to write a play. Um, the second thing I need is I kind of vaguely like to know where I'm starting and where I'm ending. Um, not, there are a lot of playwrights who just kind of start and like to see where it takes them, and that's a perfectly great way of working. Um, I like to roughly know where I'm going. Um, and I compare writing a play to like taking a car ride. Like I know I'm going to drive from I don't know Manila to Baguio, but I don't know if I'm going to get there. And the process of writing the play becomes the the, the way to find that route. And that allows me to, to to keep this balance between being free enough to go off on tangents, to do to go places that I don't understand, to have the character turn into a doc. Um, I'm free enough to do that. Uh, but I still keep in my mind that, you know, at some point, I still have to get to Baguio. Um, and it, 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 it helps me keep that balance that Pinter talks about. Um, in the case of that butterfly, I was thinking about, uh, thinking about this story for a long time, because I thought it would be a good play. And um, one day I asked myself, well, what did this diplomat think that he found? And the answer came to me, oh, he probably thought he found his version of Madame Butterfly. Madame Butterfly being um, the lead character from the famous opera by Giacomo Puccini um, about a Japanese geisha who falls in love with an American soldier and uh, suffers a lot, basically. Um, but it, it's sort of Madame Butterfly becomes sort of the template for the West stereotype of the submissive Asian woman who's willing to sacrifice herself for a Western man. So at that point, the idea of dovetailing the plot of Madame Butterfly and the events of the spy story seemed to me to be an interesting way to tell that story. So I thought, OK, at the beginning of the play, the Frenchman will fantasize that he's Pinkerton, who's the American lieutenant from the opera Madame Butterfly, and that he's found his butterfly. And that by the end of the play, the Frenchman will realize that it's actually he who's butterfly, that it's he who was manipulated by love, and the Chinese spy who perpetrated that deceit is therefore the real Pinkerton. So once I had that beginning and that end, then I was able to start writing the play. The third thing I need, and this is really kind of strange to me, I don't know a lot of other people who do this, but anyway, that's what I do. Um, I tend to like to model my plays on other plays. Um, and you know, those of you who are writers know that a lot of times you model characters after people you know. So um, there's a character based on your Uncle Fred. And you know, if you're writing and it's going well, and you know, about you know, a quarter way, a third of the way through the play, that character is no longer your Uncle Fred. 
that character started to take on characteristics, to have history, to do things that actually your uncle Fred didn't do. But basing it on someone you know really just helps you to jumpstart the process. Um, and for me, it's the same idea with basing things on other plays. It's just to think, I'm going to write a play kind of like the play um, really helps me get going. So in, this, in the case of M. Butterfly, um, M. Butterfly is a play where you have the lead character, who's the Frenchman, comes out at the beginning of the play as an older man after the major events of the play have taken place and talks to the audience and says, essentially, um, okay, this very strange thing happened to me and um, gosh, well, you know, let me think about it and how did I get there? And then uh, the play flashes back and in the flashback scenes where we see what happened, um, that same man plays himself as a younger person. Now that is a structure that's taken from, um, I don't know, I don't have a guess. Um, it's a, there are two British plays. There are two plays by a British author. Um, one became a movie and won an Academy Award. Um, one, the one that won the movie and the became the movie and won the Academy Award, one of the characters was Mozart. Okay, it's Amadeus, AK. So Amadeus and Equus are two plays by Peter Schaffer. And in both cases, you have exactly that situation. In Amadeus, which you may have seen because of the film, actually Equus became a movie too, but um, it's um, Salieri, the guy who is accused of, of, of murdering Mozart. Salieri is the narrator. He comes at the end of the, at the after the event of the play taking place, talks to the audience, seeing plays flash back. So, and Butterfly is essentially based on the structure of um, Peter Schaffner. And so, once I have those three things, I can begin to write a play.